。二零一七年刚刚开始，虽然一月份大多地区的气温呢是上上下下起伏不定，但是一月份大多地区的房地产市场的交易呢却是异常的火爆，不见降温。Past month has been really crazy,、um, and the public's been really feeling it, and it's lot, mainly because there's lack of listings right now. That's right. Listings are down 49.6 percent、mm-hmm. um, in January compared to last year,、mm-hmm. and the amount of listings sold have、uh, gone up 11 percent.、Yeah. What's your prediction for the 2017 GTA、um, real estate market?、Mm-hmm. Um, so Toronto's really crazy like that. I think the condos are still going to appreciate very well.、Mm-hmm. I think it goes then to townhouses that will appreciate a little bit better than condos, and then homes. Detached and semi-detached are going to be,、um, you know, the prized possession of everyone out there. You're now watching Canadian Mandarin Economics Television. 家国地产发展趋势，近期楼市最新动态。地产行业权威发布，众多专家分析点评，尽在置业家国。观众朋友，大家好，欢迎收看本期的置业家国。二零一七年刚刚开始，虽然一月份大多地区的气温呢是上上下下起伏不定，但是一月份大多地区的房地产市场的交易呢却是异常的火爆，不见降温。地产局一月份的数据表示 ，GTA 地区房屋销售和房价均是呈双位数上涨。那么，如此不同寻常的上涨，究竟还能维持多久？二零一七年是否对于大多地区的房地产市场又是看涨的一年呢？我们今天的节目请来了 Royal LePage 的 Carl 来到我们的节目当中，跟我们共同探讨这一话题。Hi Carl. Hi Jackie, how are you doing? Hi, good.、Um, before we get into today's business, could you please give、um, our audience a brief introduction about yourself? Yeah. So I. Obviously, work in residential real estate. I specialize in and around Toronto,、um, and I help people buy, sell, and rent and invest.、Mm-hmm. Well, the first chapter of this year Toronto real estate stories reads a lot like the last. With、um, January,、uh, we have a 22 percent increase in home prices. So, could you please give us a brief、um, summary of how、uh, real estate market doing the past month? Yeah, in the past month, it's been really crazy,、um, and the public's been really feeling it. And it's、mm-hmm. li- mainly because there's lack of listings right now. That's right. Listings are down 49.6 percent、mm-hmm. um, in January compared to last year,、mm-hmm. and the amount of listings sold have、uh, gone up 11 percent. Yeah. So right now, if we were to just say, you know, there weren't any more listings、um, coming on the market, the whole market and supply of listings would be sold. In about a month,、mm-hmm. um, so right now we're really dealing with a shortage、um, of real estate, and that's really starting to, you know, explode in the prices. That's right. So usually we know that winter is like a low season for、uh, real estate market transaction, right? But until today, we haven't seen a sign of such low season for the past of month. So in your opinion, what just happened? Yeah, you know, I used to tell my buyers that the best time to buy was in the winter.、Mm-hmm. Um, there's snow on the ground. People are busy. There's holidays. Right. It's a great time to buy because there were opportunities and there weren't as many active buyers.、Mm-hmm. Now, because everyone has been searching for a house, and a lot of the people who were originally were going to buy in the fall,、mm-hmm. they haven't been able to buy, and that demand has kind of crept into December, January,、mm-hmm. where now we're really seeing that happen.、Um, sellers are starting to see that you know if they list their house, they could likely get it sold any time、right. of the year. And buyers are starting to just say, you know, instead of choosing, oh, I'm going to go into the spring market, where we know the inventory is the best,、mm-hmm. they're trying to get a head start on it, just、okay. because they've been looking for a long time.、Mm-hmm. I think that's what's going on with the winter market. We heard people are using like crazy or out of control to describe the current situation here, and a lot of people is like,、uh, if I don't own property now, I may not be able to like、uh, afford one in the coming future. Like it's actually a war for the buyers right now. So, in your opinion, what should the government do to solve or ease the situation right now? Yeah, it really is crazy,、um, and. As a realtor, I feel that for my clients as well,、mm-hmm. because you know the affordability is really going out the window for certain people,、right. especially young families.、Um, you know, everyone wants a house, but they can't necessarily get it. You know, I felt it when I first started real estate. I had a full head of hair, and I didn't have any grays in my beard. <laughs> but now, you know, times have changed.、Um, so I think you know, government involvement is a little bit of a tricky situation,、mm-hmm. just because you know these are. 
private homes being sold mm -hmm. um, to individuals. So they can't really regulate the prices. They can, you know, tinker with the interest rate. Um, we can look into maybe giving a reduction on uh, property taxes. Mm -hmm. Maybe first time buyers or new, new buyers don't pay property taxes for a few years. Maybe, you know, that land transfer tax um, that's getting, you know, it's really creeping up there and it's really expensive. Maybe that for first time buyers so we can get young families into homes. Maybe we waive that all together instead of just a certain, you know, first time buyer rebate. Mm -hmm. You mentioned that we are, right now we're a lack of um, in, like a listing, right? So for the listing part, what, is there anything that government could do? It's really tough, you know, because a lot of the sellers now before, you know, they, real estate wasn't necessarily such of a hot topic. Everyone knows this year that prices are going up, mm -hmm. you know, 10 to 16% across mm -hmm. the market. Yeah. And if it's a house, a detached house, it's likely going up even more. Mm -hmm. So sellers are looking at it and thinking, you know, if I can wait it out a year and I don't have to, you know, I don't have to necessarily move right now. That's right. Why not wait a year and get an extra 20% next year when I go to sell? Mm -hmm. You know, and also too, right, when you're selling, unless it's someone's second property, right. they're selling their home and then they're going to have to buy another in this exact same crazy market. So you might be making a lot of money on your sale, but what happens when you have to buy? Mm -hmm. It's a real problem. So you're, you know, if you're selling for top dollar, you're also buying for top dollar. Mm -hmm. So it's a bit of a complicated scenario. I'm sure the government's looking into it, but at the same time too, you know, when you've got individuals selling properties and buying properties, you know, themselves, you can't really have that much, much government yeah, involvement. That's right. It's pretty much personal levels. Yeah. Like what people do, what people think. I would like to keep the government out of my house, <laughs> um, you know, but if we can reduce the land transfer taxes and maybe property taxes, get a control of the utilities for young families getting into places, mm -hmm. I think that would be a better starting point. So the last question we have to ask you, like what's your prediction for the 2017 GTA um, real estate market, where it goes? Yeah, I think we're only going up um, and a lot of people who own properties and investors will like that. Right. Um, even investors coming into Toronto will like that because right now um, the percentages that you're getting in appreciation, you really can't get that in uh, any other industry. Mm -hmm. um, so Toronto's really crazy like that. I think the condos are still going to appreciate very well. Mm -hmm. I think it goes then to townhouses that will appreciate a little bit better than condos. And then homes, detached and semi-detached, are going to be, um, you know, the prized possession of everyone out there. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, you know, people used to dream of having a multi-million dollar home or a million dollar home. Now they're just having a dream of getting a home, whether it's a three bedroom, two bathroom, depending on the area, that's the new dream. Mm -hmm. um, at least in Toronto, we're kind of turning into, uh, let's say, the, you know, New York of the states, we're, we're kind of looking like that for Toronto here. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't see it slowing down whatsoever. I think if I was to give advice to sellers, I'd say if you don't have to sell, um, and if you're an investor and you don't have to sell, hold on, um, you're still gonna be able to ride that appreciation wave. If you're a buyer, I'd get in pretty quickly because you know interest rates are only going up, they're tightening the lending criteria, and the purchase prices are only going up. If you wait a year or two, you know, you're going to have to come up with an extra hundred or something grand. There are no such price like yesterday. <laughs> yeah, so if I could buy properties, you know, two years ago right now, I think everybody would be. That's so right. I don't see a crash whatsoever coming. Mm -hmm. um, I think eventually maybe in four to five years, it could slow down a bit, but I don't think we're going to be dealing with any devastating, you know, fallout where prices crash. Mm. Thank you. Thank you so much, Carl, for coming today. And we really appreciate you joining us on our show today. It's my pleasure. Thank you. 好的，非常感谢您收看本期的职业家国。我们下期节目再见。